Seniors' health care in the home is a major theme in New Brunswick. We have systemic challenges to how we look after our aging population. Today's guest is Karen Lake. She is a senior home care specialist and care navigator. Her conversation takes us into many of the details about how to provide home health care, the systemic change that's needed that could also create many jobs, and the notion of using a snow globe as an image for how we need to turn the system upside down and turn it back up and watch the new pieces fall into place. So welcome to the show. Thank you. As we were warming up, you were talking about your many personalities, and one of them is being an activist. <laughs> um, so the field of home health care and all of the buzz currently in the media about mm -hmm. Meta V Blue Cross taking over administration of extramural and and then all of the many New Brunswickers who are looking for the system to kick in and to help them. And you mm -hmm. sit at the intersection of all those parts. And a key piece of that is the activism, helping people understand and promoting what to do and when to do it. Yeah, yeah the activism part um, can, I guess it does touch a few different roles. The, the, the biggest um, issue um, in regards to the extramural and, and meta V um, uh, issue that you just spoke about um, is really just helping people to even decide or determine the differences between what is home health care and what is in home care. Um, it, it has raised a lot of issues and it has people scratching their head and asking a lot of questions. Uh, so I did take the opportunity to write a blog about that specifically because it seemed timely that at the time when people were asking a lot of questions about what's the difference between home health care, like what extramural provides, and what's in-home care or home support care. So there is a big difference between the two of them, um, being that ho home health care is administered by a professional, uh, could be a nurse, a dietitian, a physiotherapist, an occupational therapist, and it's typically paid for by government services, by the Department of Health, Whereas in-home support is usually provided by an unregulated care force of personal care workers, home support workers, um, that particular skill set. Hmm. So there is a difference between the two. Um, but it has been timely because the whole issue with home health care and in-home health, um, supporting people at home has been a really hot topic lately. Um, so that's been great for uh, the effort of getting home in home support services on the map and getting some attention because it really needs some attention <laughs> yeah yeah what inspired you to go out on your own did you did you see a huge need of some sort uh, i've been working in home health care for i always gauge it by how old my son is i'm gonna so i'm gonna say 21 <laughs> years about 21 22 years i started uh, in home health care and i just really always um enjoyed uh, seeing people being supported at home mm. and seeing some of their health needs being able to be met at home. I really enjoyed the family dynamic. I liked being involved with the family, seeing the client as a whole and helping people to recover at home. That really appealed to me. And so once um, I entered into that field, I really didn't go back to um, in hospital care or another uh, way of nursing. This was just uh, my niche, as we call it in nursing. And I had found it and I really enjoyed it. Um, did I see a need? There's a huge need uh, for people to have uh, support and guidance, to have their questions answered. Um, I didn't know that this was coming for me. I had been working at a previous post for several years and um, things changed at that post. Um, but I realize now that it was a gift and um, now I get to do uh, different things and help more people. Uh, in a much broader way. So I'm still doing what I've always loved, just in, <coughs> um, in a very unique way. Yeah. Mm. Great. Yeah. Back to the activist part then. Mm. Um, so it sounds like you're at this major intersection. Also, you're probably in the right spot at the right time because it's such a large public conversation about home health care, reducing uh, hospital costs, and people mm -hmm. wanting to stay in their home longer. Mm -hmm. um, once upon a time, our extramural system was set up in the late 80s and early 90s for that sole purpose. Um, 
I'm still not clear if it's the world class model it once was, or if politics and budgets have chipped away at, at the delivery of that service. I do know on the other side that people are trying to make their way through a complex system that has, has its own private language. Hmm. So in the activist work that you do, what's the top uh, item or the top two or three items that um, should be shared with a bigger audience? Mm -hmm. There's no doubt the extramural program is an excellent program. Um, I don't I don't know that I necessarily agree with it having to be outsourced. I think we have a solid civil service that probably could have managed some of those issues um, and, and solved some of the, the problems. I don't know that it necessarily had to be outsourced um, to, make, to uh, obtain efficiencies, mm. um, but it is a good system. I think that any large bureaucratic system like that does need review and does need to look for cost savings. Um, and probably there could be efficiencies found there. Mm -hmm. Where I feel that there could be more benefit um, from outsourcing and integrating with Ambulance New Brunswick would have been looking at the other end of the spectrum and looking at these in-home support caregivers um, who are grossly underfunded in our province and have been for many years and enhancing that sector so that so that was a, a well organized more efficient more regulated system that would encourage more people to enter to become a caregiver i, I truly believe if we had more in-home personal support workers mm -hmm. there could be a lot more people supported at home i think a lot of people end up going to hospital because their caregiver if they're fortunate enough to have someone yeah has become burned out or has become tired and has just raised their hands in in their fatigue they're in burnout mm -hmm. and they really just can't handle the responsibility any longer and I, I really do believe that a lot more people could be supported in the community if they had in-home help mm -hmm. so that's the other part of the activist work so the in-home help can you paint us some specifics to that for example, is mm -hmm. it are they paid minimum wage or is it a little bit more than that? Mm -hmm. Is there a high turnover rate in that position mm -hmm. because the pay is so low? Mm -hmm. um, what are the training opportunities in order to get into that field? Mm -hmm. There are training organizations in the province and they typically train personal care workers. Um, there's a tuition, they use a standardized curriculum and it, it is more costly. You are in class for the entire duration of your course and you do your curriculum and then you find a job. But the way that the service providers or the agencies, if you will, that employ home support workers and personal support workers in the province, they have had to adapt a train as you go method or they have to train their own staff so in order for them to even have enough staff to fulfill your request when you call to ask for help for your family member they have to train their own people and so they're always constantly recruiting hmm. training and putting them out to work while they're training and I really don't think that's a very efficient system. I mean, personally, if I was to hire someone to look after my parent, I would want them to have the training and the experience, not be a personal support worker in training. In process. Um, so that's a, that's a really big challenge that the service providers or the agencies, if you will, um, who provide these services face is because they have to train their own and they are, they're having to absorb that cost. Um, the program's grossly underfunded and the staff are paid a little bit more than, min than minimum wage, as you had said. Mm -hmm. um, the rate is typically around the 1340 per hour mark. Uh, some have benefits, some do not. Some pay mileage, some do not. They have to contribute to the cost of their training. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not a, a very well organized system. And therefore, you just don't have the appeal of, and people are not um, encouraged to go into that type of system yeah. because the pay is really not um, compensating them for the great responsibility that they have. One of the narratives in the province that's a constant is what do we do to help keep our young people here? Mm. And you're mapping out one avenue for those that have an affinity or a heart for that type of work, that if that system was a little more 
thoughtful or a little yeah. more mature as a system. Yeah. That would be one of the avenues to keeping more young people here. Because... There's a huge job creation. <laughs> There's a huge job creation strategy uh, or opportunity, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, but it does take, um, as I say, uh, inverting it upside down and then setting it back up almost like a snow globe. <laughs> <laughs> like you have to invert it, shake it up and then put it back and... Yeah, and then reorganize things. Things really do need to be reorganized in the province if we do want to have people at home. Um, That's all the buzz. That's all we hear. It is truly the desire of most people as well. Most people would want to be supported in their community. Um, But it's really unfortunate that there's many people who cannot be. Um, And a big part of that is because there simply aren't enough formal care providers to provide to provide support and services to the people in the community as well as their families mm-hmm. and that's where it really does tie into my work because I do see many family caregivers family members who are trying to support their loved one going without care and they're doing it on their own because they either have tried to hire help have not been pleased with the caliber of the help they're they're getting because going back to the training issue, <laughs> yeah. um, and there's a lack of uh, qualified caregivers. There's a critical shortage in the province, and that's been well uh, voiced by many of the different organizations that look to represent uh, personal care worker issues. And so caregivers are going without. And when you don't have support, when you're providing care to a loved one, it can easily lead to burnout. And mm. you're the first one to hop in the car and say, I can't do this anymore and go to the hospital. And there someone will stay in mm. the hospital until such time they go to a nursing home. Yep. And that's a clear description of the systemic challenge that we have on healthcare. It's a challenge. And, and a lot of times the conversation around that challenge tends to be project mindset. Oh, if we just go and fix this part, then everything will be better rather than the systemic wall, because you want it to take the snow globe, shake it up, turn it upside down, because that's what it's going to take. Um, yeah, it means being bold. Yes. And it means being creative. <laughs> and it means being different. And those sometimes are things that don't always sit well um, in government and in policy. Um, it, it doesn't sit well. People don't, people generally resist change. Mm. But the whole, that old adage of um, it's how we've always done it, is not going to cut it Hmm. with the number of people that are entering the care system daily. And this isn't a new problem. Like I said, when we sat down, (laughs) um, I've been involved in the home care sector in Fredericton for at least 18 years. Hmm. And this goes way back to a point where we were having issues with finding enough qualified staff to care for people. So it's a long-standing problem, and it's one that won't be fixed overnight. It isn't just a matter of inverting and, yeah. and putting it back down. It is a lot of work to put the pieces together. And, and I, I can see some synergies with the extramural program. Uh, certainly, um, there have been some people who have gone so far as to say, um, could this whole sector not be a part of the extramural system? That would mean moving departments. Um, you know, there's 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 lots of different conversations going on about how this um, piece of supporting people at home with these caregivers it really is um, almost like another service, another uh, sector, if you will, hmm. that really um, is in synergy with the extramural services. They're they're paraprofessionals. They're uh, they're an unregulated professional, per, uh, personal support workers. They're generally unregulated in the province. Hmm. Um, but there's some synergies there with the work they do. Um, I can certainly see the synergy with personal care workers supporting uh, the same clients that extramural are seeing more so than an ambulance New Brunswick driver or an, an ambulance New Brunswick um, paramedic. Yep. I, I see the synergies a lot more with, with that than than integrating with ambulance New Brunswick. But. Hmm. So there's gaps that could be fixed. Another narrative in the province is in those gaps, we're a small place. Mm. We're supposed to be able to adapt quicker, move lighter, um, be a bit more creative because our scale is so small. In the healthcare delivery model, as you see it, 
even though you described it as it's going to be a challenge to take the bureaucracy, you sort of invert it a little bit. Mac. Do you see ways how that could happen? It gets into the how a little bit more than the what. But mm. but if, if we're at that crossroads, I think, in general, whether it's the economy, healthcare delivery, education, there's systemic challenges that need to find a new path to how to create the new solutions. So it'll take people like you in your field and others in their field to come up with Here's the concrete things we now need to start to change, which can then get into, okay, we need to let go <laughs> the old way we've always done it. Mm -hmm. A for instance would be mm -hmm. uh, the culture in New Brunswick since the mid-60s, um, every community is supposed to have a hospital. And yet the interview with John McGarry a year and a half ago when he was CEO of Horizon Health was that New Brunswick's perfectly geographically situated for a regional healthcare delivery model. Mm -hmm. But his main obstacle was the cultural narrative that every community needed physical bricks and mortar hospitals. Mm -hmm. So the breakthrough wasn't technology, the breakthrough wasn't budget, the breakthrough wasn't human resources, the breakthrough was a perception. Mm -hmm. We needed to shift that. Mm -hmm. I think may, in, in relation to some of the work that, that interests me and that I advocate for would be um, shifting in how we see personal care workers and seeing them as part of the continuum of health, that um, the continuum of health, if you will, starts at home and with the people and the, the um, professions that support them there. So. If, if, if things were to be restructured or shifted or changed, I think it would be our perception of, of that continuum of care. I know some people don't like to use that reference of continuum of care, but there, there generally is a point where people start to need help or support, and it's at home. Um, and seeing those services that people receive at home not as custodial work, but seeing it as that that's improving and supporting my health at home so that not dismissing the importance of having a nutritious meal, having your medications on time, having a clean home, a safe surrounding. That's all very conducive to your health. So rather than seeing these personal support services as custodial or a maid service, that these um, very important people are actually a part of supporting people's continuum of health and it all starts at home. So I think that's the biggest shift we need to make in the province is seeing this work as somewhat less important or seeing it as um, custodial is the word that keeps coming to me but um, that it's actually a part of it and that it's a really uh, integral part of it um, those examples, the, the medications, the meals, the clean environment, having a bath, having someone look at your skin, having someone support you walk, having someone make sure that you're safely moving around your home and not falling. Those are all huge things that can help prevent that burden um, at the hospital's doors. So if I really believe if there was an enhanced system of personal support, personal care worker support in the community, then many more people could be supported safely at home. Yeah, it, it starts with a shift in who these people are and how important their work really is. Yes. There are other professions that probably would echo the same sentiment. I'm yeah. thinking of uh, you know, people that work in daycares mm -hmm. and the conversation around daycares in the 80s and the 90s and finally getting the ECE or Early Childhood yes. Education Certification process and getting past paying minimum wage mm -hmm. because these are children you're caring for. Mm -hmm. um, so it, the, it echoes, it the, resonates. The coalition for pay equity in the province have been working tirelessly on that very exact same issue. They've been working on the education uh, issue for sure. And alongside of that, they're working on the women that are in caring professions as well, specifically mm -hmm. personal support workers. Mm -hmm. And they're, they've got a campaign going right now. There, there's a lot of momentum right now. Um, this MetaV issue has raised the issue of home care. Um, there have been other people, other advocates, activists, uh, uh, public personas who have been speaking about the importance of in-home care and personal support care. Um, so the momentum is there right now. I think this is a, a moment to be heard right now. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're all, um, you know, speaking from the same songbook finally mm. um, but it is a matter of decision making and priority making and 
yeah, there's been some great people leading the, the issue. And thank you for watching. Be good. Have fun. Love each other. The Dennis Report is an independent media production. To support the program, go to DennisAtchison.com and click Become My Patron on Patreon. Patreon.